Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to our next of course analysis of week 8 against Justice Spectacular. Uh, his channel will be linked down below. Make sure of course to check that one out. And basically this is our analysis of his team. He's a very very strong team. He's gone strong throughout this season. He's right now 6 and 1. So he needs to win this one if he wants to secure his first place. He did lose to the second place holder, we of course Gassy. So he, I know he definitely will be hungry. And looking to his team, we are in a bad spot. Like his team, I would say, are better. Um, it has a better offensive presence and have a better defensive response. So it's very, very. According to what it brings, is pretty much what's gonna judge this game throughout. Um, now, his complete team is as follows, Larias, Manaphy, Chandelor, Miltank, Aromatis, Zygon, Hiroshi, Rodenwash, Skullipede and Megapsol. So a lot of tough mons I have to deal with and a lot of them being, you know, all of them aren't faster than my team but there are enough speed on them that it could outspeed me. Skullipede of course has access to speed boost which is something I'm really really scared of. Um, that even puts a few of my sc potential Scarfer at um, a bad spot because even with Scarf, I'm not guaranteed to speed it after one speed boost. And it is kind of dangerous to try to um, save that one up, so I won't have any Scarf in this game. And I've been throwing a lot of thoughts back and forth which one I should bring. And of course, Robin Ellis, too extremely good battlers have been helping out constructing this team and you know we they tested it out and i watched it watched the game actually they battle each other to actually find out what potentially josh can bring against me to win this game and um it looks like this is a game i can lose um definitely i mean and i mean lose big so uh, my initial thought is basically i am in playoff if i make 4-0 uh, or if I lose 4-0, um, I'm still in the playoffs, so my my playstyle hill will be, of course, to try to win, but honestly, I'll just try to go for sheep chaos, that's that's my best bet. And outside of that, I really just hope that um, <laughs> I do my best here. His team is really tough, I have no way of winning, basically, or I can win, but I'm, I'm feeling that his team is very good. So, um, if I lose, I won't be that surprised because he's a good battler too and he won. I think we battled two times before and he battled me bo or win won both times. So, high respect for this guy and I really, really hope I can do something. But anyway, this is the team I'm bringing! Hey! First one up is Thunderous. And yeah, for one very, very simple reason, really. Uh, it's speed tier, make sure I have speed Latios, which will be important. And um, we have some. Uh, HP investment to make sure that we can survive a Chandelure's uh, modest fire blast because that's something that we could be facing. Also, a life or rock slide from a uh, Scallopy will not kill us. And uh, basically, Thunderbolt hits everything neutral outside of Psyguard and Latias. But we have, of course, uh, Hidden Power Ice, which will hurt them a whole lot. And hopefully, if it brings either Mil Tank or Aromatis, we can set up a nasty plot against them. And Thunderbolt is basically there to uh, make sure. Or not for a fun wave, is there to make sure that Scallopede, if he goes on a rampage, can be shut down in a fashion. And basically, Thunder Wave will work well against potential Scarfers too. Um, that's pretty much the size of it. It is a fail save, and I hope it works. Next one up, Empoleon. And uh, yeah, I mean, our first initial thought was, of course, making my Empoleon uh, actually be a stealth rocker, but he yeah, really can't pull that off with this set. And this. Uh, Set is very very close to the set I had against Eric my first week. It is Ice Beam Scold, Toxic for Latios. And initially any mon that comes in that can Toxic basically. And Defog. Because if I lose the chance to get off Rocks myself, I really want to make sure that he doesn't get Rocks up on his side. Now Rocks is not hurting my team a whole lot, but it's something to kind of keep at bay. Uh, we have enough Special Bolt to avoid a 2 hit KO from Oda's Fire Blast from Chandelure. And uh, enough physical bolt to not be overcoated by absolute superpower, uh, which I feel are likely. Um, we can survive this stellar prox combination. Um, we have, a, I think, there was a 12% chance with stealth prox and superpower combination to kill us. And of course, I can survive an earthquake from both Psyguard and uh, sorry, Psyguard and Scallopy life form if it decides to do so. Um, 
basically that's pretty much the size of it. Like I said, Toxic is for the defensive mod, but it also works well against the likes of Manaphy, Rotom, Aromatis, and Miltank if they decide switching on it. So, and Pauline is a mod I don't see doing a whole lot. I don't like going defensive on it, but it is needed for this particular game. So, yeah, Kodos and Polion, I really, really hope it doesn't die too fast because it's a nice response to his Lodios, which of course resists both his stab. Though it's very likely it has Earthquake due to my previous week against uh, Fritamion, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, so, that's something I'm gonna keep in mind, but like I said, it's very unlikely that Lodios will do a whole lot of damage with Earthquake, depending on his set, of course. If it is bad at Earthquake, then so be it, but that's about it. And the Fermo whip is, of course, Alakazam. Alakazam is, well, let's face it, it is fast, and that's the reason we use it. It has also access to Substitute, Focus Blast, Sideshow, and Calm Mind. Um, Focus Blast, as you guys know, I am a big fan of, I like missing that move. <laughs> But basically, we have enough speed here to actually outspeed Mega Absol. We have enough HP to survive a modest Fire Blast from Chandelure. We have Life Orb, of course, to even hurt a little bit more. Uh, the thing is here, if you go has a modest Chandelure, uh, we should actually survive... Um, <laughs> um, sorry, a Shadow Ball from it after one Cold Mine, which is something we got hope for that we can pull off. Outside of that, Substitute is there for, of course, his Scolipede, setting up potential. Protect and um, second up was, of course, let's see here. I got it. Yeah, absolutely going for a sucker punch. We can actually set up a substitute while he's trying to, to pull that off. And hopefully, you know, <clears throat> we can hit that focus blast. But that's pretty much the size of it. Um, I am completely walled by Larias, but um, I hope I can set up Calm Minds against it if, it if the situation forces us to that. He's very likely to be a special defensive Larios due to Denji. And uh, I feel that a side shock with two Calm Mind Spider, which is kind of, to, kind of stretch, honestly, would at least be a 50% hit on it. But we'll see what happens. I am not likely to say it with Alex Sam on a lot of who brings it. But um, if the situation calls for it, then I'll try to set up because, let's face it, the special defense on Alex Sam is nothing to be shredded at. It's definitely something I can work against him. So, yeah, Alex Sam is here because of that very reason. And it's fast. Hurts hard. Let's do it. And next spawn up is Landris for seventh week actually. So he's been definitely a reoccurring Pokemon. For his defensive responses, definitely, but it also is kind of flexible. Now, it's been kind of juggling back and forth what I will use, definitely, but we did decide on here at least for Earthquake Knockoff. They're given. It hurts his team so much. And Rock Polish or U-Turn. I did end up going for Rock Polish, hoping that of course that with one rock polish. That I'm outspeeding the Scolipede, outspeeding the Absol, and in all honesty, I'm outspeeding a lot of things, and I shouldn't really need to worry about this team after that. And of course, having a Scarf Hirachi means that it actually is O-Code -ok by my Earthquake. If it isn't a defensively investment, which I feel is unlikely. Um, we have enough speed um, without, of course, Rock Polish to outspeed Chandler. And Earthquake, like I said, hits everything neutral outside of that. He has a Rotom. Um, Rotom. While it could be potentially walling me, Stealth Rock is there because I need Stealth Rocks. I have a Yasha Berry to hope that I can take a potential Icy hit. Um, one thing that did hit me was that it's very likely that Absol has Ice Beam, um, since it's a good lead Pokemon here. And also Yirashi can have Icy Wind and man, if he can have Ice Beam. So they are situations that we could actually be fair enough of. Um, outside of that, I mean, Earthquake hurts everything in the team, like I said, I do believe Earthquake does around 80% plus at uh, uh, on um, Scolipede, so we are very likely here to do well, outside of course, Rotom, which is, is not walling us, but it's not a hole I can do to it either, and um, of course, you know, I don't know how hard I can hit Lariat, I might eat up the thing that I don't have U-turn, but if I pull off a Rock Polish uh, late game, then it should be really nothing standing on my way to win this battle, basically. So that's my initial thought, and I really hope that, of course, works. And, of course, Daienji is making it, because Daienji is godlike in this kind of environment. Now, I will state all the necessary stuff that, of course, need to be stated. That is, that the mods that are faster are going to be faster. Uh, we have Moon Blaster power because it hits everything at least neutral. And, you know, obviously, super effectively. 
and to basically calm mind for setting up against Aromatis and Militan who have Rock Polish, potentially if it has a Scarlet Bead, pulling basically a Sharp Pedo situation where it's a go for Protect and I can go for Rock Polish. Now he might oversee that, but that's pretty much my best bet. And honestly, um, we don't have enough speed to outspeed uh, uh, Ladias because we don't really see that as a potential threat. Now Ladias could hurt us with Earthquake, but it's not a killing hit, it really isn't. And we have enough speed man to, uh, to believe, yeah, we have speed mana in Yurashi, which was pretty much the only big threats that we needed to have speed. Now, obviously, like I said, Yurashi is potentially Scarfed, and that's something we need to watch out for. But that's pretty much it. I mean, Absol could have Iron Tail, and I do believe Miltank could have Iron Head, but that's in their initial thoughts. I mean, he has to really work around his sets to pull that off against me. I don't see a lot of his mons dealing with the energy well. Outside of foremost mana mentioned, if I outspeed, I'm killing something. That's pretty much the size of it, and I do believe that actually can pull that off pretty, pretty effortlessly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So the last one we're gonna bring is Shaman, and yeah, Shaman is as always a very, very good defensive response. Uh, we have enough special defense investment here to avoid a KO from a Mali Shandalos Fire Blast, which is important. We also avoid barely. A Timid Mana Feast plus 3 Ice Beam, and that's pretty much the size of it. Uh, the retaliation that Mana Feast, the, sh the Shaman can do, is usually in the area where it can almost KO him on. Earth Power is super good against him, he has two, flo has two floaters, um, which I have to watch out for, and I have Toxic for that very reason alone. Now, the thing is, Shaman is gonna fall this game, there is nothing to it, but it will be a good response to a lot of his team, he can actually just come in, he can kind of survive, and that's pretty much what I needed to, I need to kind of, if my opponent gets momentum, I really need to just bring something to stop that, you know, and I can get my foot back in. So that's pretty much the role of Shaman, now Shaman will be forced out by Scolopede, and Scolopede even can set up against this set, so as long as I have Landris, I really need to keep Shaman and Landris intact, because they pretty much are responses for each other. If one of them falls, then he can bring something to set up, which is something I'm not looking forward to. So yeah, that's the team. Now, like I said, uh, there are a few mods he has that I really, really am scared of. And like I said, I really only need to lose 0-4 and I should get into playoffs. Um, this, I don't really need to win, but I'll try my best. But like I said, his team is really good and if he plays aggressively like I'm fearing, then I don't know how well I'll like keep myself up, but I should be able to at least do some good. I have some good sets that could at least snag some momentum. Like a Sam against Absol is going to be one of those situations. Thunderous for shutting down Scalopede is one of those important situations. Uh, I can't lose Thunderous if Scalopede is still around, and the Landers is an overall a good response to any mod that is offensively built. Now, Saigar can sit up against Landers, yes. But I also can knock off his Yasha Berry, and uh, he needs two Dragon Dances to actually Oko my Empoleon, and I hope the Ice Beam just do just about enough on that. And of course, Shaman can potentially survive the Earthquake that is followed. It's very likely. Um, yeah, outside of that, I mean, this is a tough team going up against. There is really no denying that. It's actually kind of scary the more I think about it. Now, the mods I think he'll bring in. Um, I'm definitely see him. He has to bring Latias. He has to have a Defogger. He has to. He must bring Manaphy. I can easily see Chandelor, Yirashi, Scolipede, Mega Absol. Definitely those those six. Um, I guess the only mod I don't really see coming is Miltank. Is kind of struggling this game. Aromatis, uh, kind of in that area too. Like those two, I'm seeing not so likely. If he does bring them, then I have at least some kind of chance of uh, getting back momentum, but if it goes for a defensive team, obviously, then I'll probably see still Ladias, um, yeah, Ladias, Miltank, Aromatis, Saigard, Hiroshi, and Golden Wash, maybe Mega Absol. Um, that combo is easier for me to deal with, but it's still a better combo against me. So, depending on how he brings it, um, those are the two sets I'm really fearing, and they're very likely to bring. Like I said, Ladias, Manaphy, Chandelor, um, Yurashi, Scolopede, and Mega Absol is what I'm seeing as the biggest threat to my team and the team I'm pretty much are prepared for trying to deal with. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to thank everybody for watching, and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow in when the bell goes up. Like I said, my god, am I scared. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, recording this on Saturday, but I'm pretty sure that we are going to battle on... Oh. Uh, don't know. But hopefully... Hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to ask him very soon when we battle, but, you know, obviously if this video is coming up, then we already battled, so... Um, <laughs> so the bell has obviously gone down. Anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I see you tomorrow with the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.